Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the media. The 36th regular conference of heads of government of the Caribbean community has come to an end. And our evaluation is that we've had a successful conference. We focused on a number of policy positions and strategies for getting the best out of the negotiations in three major policy setting global conferences. How to ensure that our education system bolsters our efforts at building our social and economic resilience. We focused too on securing our energy future. We dealt with some border issues uh, in particular, recent actions of one of our neighbors as they affected our Caribbean community. And we also focused too on the looming humanitarian crisis in Haiti, created by the actions of the Dominican Republic. We also had an exchange of views with the Secretary General of the United Nations, the Commonwealth Secretary General, and of course, the president of Panama. In looking at the global negotiations, we considered the possible outcomes of benefit to small island developing states, uh, of which CARICOM is, is, is composed. Uh, we looked at that in relation to the third Financing for Development Conference the United Nations Post-2015 Development Agenda and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the 21st Conference of the Parties, which is being held in Paris at the end of the year. We did all of this fully aware that these outcomes will have a significant impact on the sustainable development efforts of the countries of the Caribbean community. Our communique, which is to be issued after this meeting, will be more detailed as to our approach. But you will allow me to just identify a few areas uh, by way of being a little more specific. In terms of access to concessional <laughs> development financing, for us in CARICOM, this remains a major issue. It is an issue, of course, which has been plaguing quite a few small island developing states. And we've been arguing, we argued in Samoa, and we've been arguing wherever we've gone, that the measure GDP per capita is an erroneous measure if you're trying to evaluate the health, the economic health of countries like ours. We've argued that this cannot be the primary criterion for determining access to uh, concessional funding. We've been arguing for a vulnerability measure because we think that the special circumstances of small and vulnerable economies must also be taken into account in the agreements that are arrived at from time to time. So far as the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference of the Parties uh, in Paris in December, we have recommitted ourselves to the belief that there should be a universally binding uh, agreement uh, which will include a limit on global warming uh, to below 1.5 degrees centigrade. Uh, that issue has continued to be contentious, but we here in the Caribbean, small island developing states are of the view that there should be no compromise on this. In our deliberations over the last two days, we also welcomed the establishment of a Caribbean Center for Renewable Energy 
which will be the implementation hub, as it were, for sustainable energy activities and projects within the Caribbean. We took the decision today that Barbados will be the host country for that center. Of course, the government of Trinidad and Tobago uh, also put on the table the establishment uh, of a Caribbean energy fund, and the conference gave its full endorsement to that proposal. In keeping with the ethos of reform in our Caribbean community, particularly as it relates to the means by which we make decisions in the community, we continue to look at our decision-making mechanisms to ensure that when we make decisions, those decisions are clear and this has become absolutely necessary in light of the fact that in the Myri decision of the Caribbean Court of Justice, we were reminded that um, the decisions of organs of the uh, community are all subject to review by the Caribbean Court of Justice. Apart from those issues, we also discuss the decree that was proclaimed by the Venezuelan government uh, on the 26th of May, and uh, the effect that that decree could have on Car CARICOM community states. We met with the a delegation from Venezuela, and we tried to get some of those issues sorted out. Of course, the main target of that decree was our original CARICOM member state, the original signatory to the Treaty of Chagarabas, and indeed, an original signatory to the CARIFTA agreement in 1965, uh, the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, and therefore, we felt that as a matter of principle and in solidarity with our CARICOM brothers and sisters in Guyana, we had to take a stand on all of that. So, generally speaking, I think we had a successful conference. As I said in my opening address on Thursday evening, there will always be things that the Caribbean community has not yet been able to do. And there will always be things that we have already done that it can be argued we could do better. But in the context of the realities we now face, I am satisfied and I think the consensus of the conference was at its close that we had a successful CARICOM conference.